Hey everyone and welcome back to the Canadian PA YouTube channel. So I'm Anne, I'm a Canadian trained uh, orthopedic surgery PA. And I'm Arthi, I'm a first year PA student at UFT. Here today we are starting a new series called Get Into PA School, which is a new platform or website that will help you with pre-PA admission tips, working on your application as well as interviews. So often when speaking with pre-PAs after they have had an unsuccessful attempt of getting into PA school, they find that um, it's a huge blow to their ego as well as their uh, concept of self, primarily because you've put so much self-reflection and thought into deciding to become a PA that when you actually put the effort to following all the steps of PA admissions and you've put in your best effort and you don't get the results that you want, that can be personally very devastating. When you do receive that decline, unfortunately, there will be a grieving process where you do have to take some time to reflect and collect yourself. But it's a very, very common process that a lot of us go through um, when applying to any career that is potentially very competitive. And I think it's important to acknowledge that um, the PA program uh, or PA profession in general in Canada is a growing profession and there are only three programs across Canada um, and the two particularly in Ontario are extremely competitive as well due to the large pool of applicants. So that being said, like there are a lot of applicants to start off and um, it's also a competitive process just because you meet the requirements doesn't make you uh, competitive applicants, but you're also competing with other people who are applying that same year. So lots of things to take into consideration before um, taking it as a blow to your almost your self-esteem or mm -hmm. um, kind of to yourself um, when you're reapplying. So not to worry, there are many examples of candidates that have gotten in after a second attempt of applying, a third attempt of applying, um, and it's all you have to do is just reflect, learn from uh, this failure and see where you can improve. And it's about moving forward. Yeah. And I think like the self-reflection is like a key aspect of um, the like key aspect uh, after receiving that rejection. And that's mm -hmm. kind of what's going to um, determine how your next application process or your next application cycle and what the results will be with that. It's whether you take this rejection as like a learning lesson and kind of uh, improve your application or just kind of reapply with the same uh, application criteria. Okay, so um, the next part is kind of just like uh, looking at the application in general. So there are obviously various components to the application that vary across the three schools across Canada. Um, so starting off, we can talk about GPA, and uh, GPA cutoffs vary across the three schools again, with UFT being approximately 2.7 for the cutoff, and then um, MAC being 3.0 for the cutoff, and I think Manitoba was slightly higher. It is, so just keep in mind that in Ontario, the GPA is on the OMSAS scale. So it's out of a 4.0, whereas University of Manitoba has their own GPA scale that they compare across, and that's uh, rated out of 4.5. So the minimum GPA in order to qualify does fluctuate a little bit from year to year, from what I understand, uh, for University of Manitoba, but it's usually between a 3.0 to 3.5 mm -hmm. out of 4.5 for Manitoba. And again, going back to just meeting the requirements versus actually being at a competitive level, that's also another thing that's important to take into consideration. Because when you do these application processes, it's not like a checklist where like, yes, I meet the cutoff of 2.7 or 3.0 for Mac or 3.0 to 3.5, I fall between that range for Manitoba. It's more about the other applicants who are also applying during that application cycle and how competitive you are compared to them. So there's a bit of relativity in that sense as well. So I guess Guess the general tip there would be kind of um, not saying have like you know perfect GPA but something that's considered competitive but that being said that's only one aspect of your application and the other components for that first part of PA school include uh, completing a supplementary application or a statement of intent and we're categorizing all of this across the three schools in one category because essentially what it is it's a, a written mini essay answering a few questions um, and how each school um, does that component is different. So in the United States, this would essentially be called the... Um, personal statement. The personal statement, thank you. <laughs> the personal statement um, at McMaster. It's called the supplemental application, and it's usually done very similar to a CASPER or uh, MMI, but you're doing it at home where you have timed video or written responses. You are not given the questions ahead of time. So they send you the link if you've met all of the admission requirements sometime in February, and then you have a certain uh, amount of days to complete that test, um, or sorry, that evaluation. 
For U of T, you're given, um, I believe, four or five essay questions where you have time to actually prepare your answer. Um, so for that one, there's a lot of kind of starting off with a rough draft and then kind of tinkering it to that perfect masterpiece. Um, but it is a bit of a different kind of approach. So you're actually given time and you're to look at the questions ahead of time, but also to answer the questions um, across a couple of weeks. I think you get like more you get more time compared to the time period where the max supplemental application is released. And then you kind of um, have to complete it on the spot before a certain deadline. So statement of intent. So University of Manitoba every single year uh, releases a PA admissions bulletin. And within this bulletin is um, a paragraph that has instructions about a statement of intent, which is a lot like a personal statement, but essentially what you're doing is within a certain word count, you're answering uh, a couple of questions about becoming a physician assistant. And um, these questions are provided ahead of time. You just have to make sure that you read uh, the admissions bulletin very carefully and follow all of the instructions that way. So that's the written component for all three schools. Mm-hmm. Um, so the next kind of component uh, in terms of PA application as a whole is healthcare experience. Uh, this one is particularly pertinent to UFT's application process because it's not like a uh, mandatory requirement for MAC, nor is it for Manitoba. Um, that being said, any healthcare experience will strengthen um, your application for any healthcare professional or professional school, um, and specifically PA. So sp- talking about UFT's uh, healthcare experience uh, requirements, 900 hours is the 910 hours is the minimum cutoff. That being said, again, that's a minimum cutoff. It's not like a checklist. You want to be consi- if you want to be considered competitive, um, more hours may potentially be considered competitive. And another component to healthcare experience is also patient the direct patient care interaction. So how much of a role did you play? Um, in terms of direct patient care experience. So were you someone who just kind of dealt with the paperwork or were you someone who kind of helped out with the treatment plan or helped out with specific parts of patient care? Or were you actually responsible for the start to finish, like meeting the patient, taking the history, actually coming up with a plan and then executing the plan as well? So there are different, there's a whole spectrum about um, how much of an interaction or how much of a direct impact you had with patient care. And that's also another component that will kind of help you assess how um, competitive or how meaningful this patient care experience or healthcare experience is for your application. So again, those are the preferred admission criteria. So as long as your healthcare is recent within the last five years, that's considered more favorably. Um, you can have both voluntary or and or paid healthcare experiences. So you don't necessarily have to have been working as a former nurse or physiotherapist, for example. It's kind of honestly like every every student has a different kind of like healthcare experience. Um, so it's kind of hard to like I can't think of someone top off the top of my head. But at the same time, there were a lot of people who did start off volunteering and then kind of use that as a segue into getting a paid opportunity. Um, depending on your undergrad degree as well, sometimes you're not able to get like secure as a healthcare professional or someone who's able to have that direct patient care experience. Mm-hmm. So when you get into hospitals as a volunteer, you're still able to kind of start off like personally, I can speak to myself, like I started off at the gift shop and eventually I worked up to the ICU where I'm talking with patient families and eventually mm-hmm. to day surgery when I'm actually interacting with the patient. So there was like a bit of a progression there. So there's always ways to get healthcare experience, whether it be volunteering or um, paid experience. And that also kind of um, is like a next step after your undergrad degree. We'll, we'll list some resources in the description box about where you can find more information about what experiences do qualify. So next we're gonna cover CV, and uh, that's only required by University of Manitoba's PA program. So CV is actually a more comprehensive uh, version of your all your experiences. So some people actually misinterpret this as like a resume, which is more like a focused version, specifically for a position or a program that you're applying to. With CV, um, I think a general tip would be to include experiences that kind of make you unique and stand out. So personally talking as a student applying, um, I try to include other experiences that were outside of healthcare in addition to including my healthcare experiences that kind of made me unique. So I included things like playing tennis and uh, being on air cadets, like different facts like that, that will make you kind of stand out um, in uh, compared to other applicants. So don't hesitate to include other stuff because your CV doesn't really have a limit. That being said, like the longer, I guess, like it's a bit, you know, it's a bit more intensive to get through, but definitely make sure you highlight your unique experiences. So next are references, and this is only required by University of Manitoba and University of Toronto. 
Mm-hmm. So for a U of T particularly, it's only one letter um, for letter of reference and then another letter for letter of confirmation. So letter of reference is more, it could be someone who could kind of advocate for you um, and there's, no really, there's not really a time limit for that, but letter of confirmation is more what your recent healthcare experiences and kind of confirming the hours so it's not so um, detailed in terms of kind of talking about you as an applicant. It's more like, yes, this person has completed this many hours. Again, there's more information about that on the website, so it's paconsortium.ca. Then University of Manitoba requires letter of references, Um, so you want to ensure that you are picking someone that can speak to you personally, that is memorable, because if someone is just confirming that you did this activity as part of some kind of program, and they're not really speaking to your character, bringing up examples, or demonstrating who you are as a person, then that person may not be a good reference to use. You want to make sure that you take the time to talk to, to these referees and uh, ensure that they could actually provide you with a strong recommendation um, because sometimes like you may think you have a good relationship with the preceptor, but um, the other way around, they probably have many students who come in and go. So it's important that they know your potential in like a healthcare environment or another environment in the work environment in general and uh, your strengths and kind of could advocate for you as an applicant. Make sure to follow the instructions very carefully. Uh, There are other supporting documents that the programs do require, so your best bet is to check the official PA program websites for the most up-to-date information. Mm -hmm. So I think another thing that I remember when applying to the University of Manitoba, uh, particularly, is the admissions bulletin. Um, It is a very comprehensive document, but you want to make sure that you thoroughly read through that more than once because there are a lot of there's a lot of information there. You want to make sure that you meet the requirements, um, but also follow the instructions for the different components of the application, whether that be statement of intent or even letter of recommendations. So in summary, in combination with your GPA supplementary application, uh, healthcare experience of applicable and other supporting documentation that they require, like your CV or references, depending on the school. Um, Based on that evaluation, the programs are going to decide whether or not to invite you for a PA interview. And that's kind of part two of um, getting into PA school.